welcome back to the channel. Today's video we will upgrade Victron Venus OS 3.41. Let's get started. Thanks for watching again. Today I hope um, you can understand me clearly enough. My voice is a little damaged, whatever. But I try to make this video anyways short, not because of my voice only, but also because it seems to be a shorter, smaller upgrade, hopefully, fingers crossed. We'll do it as always, I'll show you what this upgrade is about, show you the release notes, then we'll do it on my test device, which is a Raspberry Pi 4, and then we'll do it on a production device, which is a Raspberry Pi 3. In this order. That's usually how we do it, so this time as well. Let's get started and let's look into the release notes, what um, are they bringing this week? And here you can see Venus OS version 3.41, Orion XS and other improvements. And when you look here on this page at least, uh, we can see that there are those changes. And actually what's pretty funny, the release notes are pretty much the same this time. Uh, at least they were able to put it on squeeze on to one page. So the last time we talked about version 3.40, which is up there and um, you can take a look into that and they were definitely way longer so 341 has a more smaller focus and I tried to highlight here in yellow already so it means you can see in yellow what it is about and one thing it's uh, the changes is for Orion XS sorry yeah I have to repeat it but uh, please pause the video right now here if you wanna read it I'll go very briefly through that I'm not reading everything loud out I'm not reading everything out loud there we go um, I'll just hop over and uh, I'll, then we'll continue with upgrading and testing. So that means uh, Orion XS, that's a big part for me. Um, video coming out pretty soon. I did install it in the car array and uh, I have it installed in my production system actually. Yeah. So, Raspberry Pi 3. And uh, we'll look at that as well in the VRM console. Uh, there's also for the Multi Plus 2 48 volts and I believe I have one of those. Congratulations, Toby. Then reduced CPU usage for systems not using the parallel links. Uh, introduced version 340. And then as well reduced CPU usage for systems not using the generator start stop function start stop functionality. And managed batteries. Also introduced Venus OS 3.40. As always, the you know you can test only so much, but it's so powerful, it's so capable when you have Venus S running, regardless of an GX of a Raspberry Pi installation it's so powerful so it's it can always happen so I'm not blaming them um, you can try to test a lot almost everything but um, then you will never be able to release anything so they might have their um, spot testing whatever a B testing not sure but it might not be enough anyways we'll start with this little unit which is my Raspberry Pi 4 right in front of me and right now you can see there's a little capacity that's totally fine um, let me go through that really quick because we do have connected GPS at the moment. We have a one wire temperature sensor connected. We have the MultiPlus connected. It's inverting. Raspberry Pi processor temperature installed through the setup helper. Video up there. And yeah, smart chart. Sometimes in between I have to cough. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm cutting it out in the videos. Uh, but I hope that uh, when, my red, my, when my face is getting redder and redder, that's why I did cough a minute ago, a second ago. Um, let's go to firmware really quick. Of, of course, on this one is running majority of my Node Red installation, so we need to make sure, correct, to back up that one. So, 340, it's installed. Let's go to online updates really quick. Let's see. Uh, yep. Let me check for updates one more time. It's 341. It's the official release. It's the large image type because I'm running Node right in the meantime on all my devices so I'm not having the small uh, or regular uh, image anymore. What do they call it? Normal. Okay. I'm not having the normal image type anymore. Alright, we'll jump over here really quick. This is my Node Red. As you remember, video up there, part 1. Part 2 coming soon. Um, here I can go on in the top right in the browser window and say export and I want to export Select the nodes, all nodes. Here we go. I'm having flow one mainly. I'll do all of them and do download. Now I've downloaded it and should hopefully, when everything's connected the same way and I have to install it again when importing this one, ideally 
a lot of the connections might be there again and also I hope my default mode right dashboard okay that's pretty much it what are we doing now I will press here to update and I'll be back when it's installed hopefully fingers crossed pretty soon and then uh, we'll do some testing all right just rebooted you can see it back online Still in wording, it's still okay. Setup helper seems to be either installed again or it was installed and it didn't do anything. Let's see, let's switch to pages really quick. Uh, see everything what I need to see. Okay, menu. Let's go to settings, firmware. Still the version 3 for zero installed, so it did not work on the first attempt. Not good. Let's see if my node red still is there. Looks like it's still there. Refresh. Let me see if my GPO works. Still works. Okay. Um, let's do it again. I'm not sure why it didn't work. Or what the problem was. One more try. I'll be back when it's installed. And by the way, I think it stopped or rebooted at 70% when I stopped looking at it and I saw the screen turning off rebooting um, but here on my browser it said 70% and I thought why is it rebooting at 70% I'm not saying installing or rebooting or something like that I didn't see that popping up because I was looking at it all right now it's installing not only downloading and I'll be back when that one's done all right this time looks better 98% Let's see if we get the reboot screen. Okay, I can see it did reboot already. It's, you can see it here on uh, the display. Interesting, okay, let me try up reconnect. Settings, firmware, online updates, and we can see it's still the 340. I don't understand what's happening here. Double check with Node Red if it's still there. It looks like it's there. Same for this page. The dashboard itself. Still working. Alright. One more try. I wanted to have a short video. Can't get shorter than this. <laughs> I'll be back if it this time can hit 100%. Alright, this was the third time. Um, right now you can see it stopped saying installing at 84% and it did reboot again. Um, why? I have no idea. To look into some locks or whatever, I can click on reconnect. Now I can see, go in settings. Uh, there we go. Settings. Firmware. 3.40 still. Very disappointing. I never had that issue. So. What I can do next, I wanted to show you something else on the other Raspberry Pi 3 in this case. And I think I'll continue anyways and try to figure out here on my 4 if that's just maybe a 4 issue. Maybe with the multiplassing combination or something else what I have connected. We'll see. So, switching over to the other one, which is here, the Raspberry Pi 3. And you can see um, currently um, it is in my car. Connected with, and if we're going to menu. It's connected, of course, Raspberry Pi processor temperature, installed via setup helper, smart chant, smart solar charger. Right now it is in the sun, that's why it's still charging and it has, um, I renamed it weirdly enough. I forgot some letters in between. The Victron um, Orion XS uh, DC to DC charger video coming out also pretty soon. And this one is currently because, yeah, correct, car is off. It's just standing in the sun right now. That's why the Raspberry Pi processor temperature is accordingly high. And we have, really quick, when I look here, we have this very, very default setup. I think I added one little temperature here, which is this one right now. I have to refresh. Yeah. So I would say I'll give it a try on this one because apparently <laughs> Raspberry Pi 4 doesn't like with whatever. Uh, installation I have online updates. Let's see. I have a large image official press to check again You saw it going back 3.40 here, right? So press to update. I'll just do it and we'll see what happens and I'll be back if in any case I'll be back
that's how it should be. Firmware installed, rebooting. That's a good sign. All right, let's see. Let's reconnect and we are back online. One thing is missing. <laughs> One is missing, which is the um, Orion XS. Not cool. But let's see. Firmware 3.41. Yeah, that's that looks good. That's how it should be, right? Okay, it looks like we're still charging. It's also good. Oh, there we are. Nice. Okay, I want to show you, and I forgot earlier, here in, on the dashboard, the VRM dashboard. Let me refresh. I did install the device. Uh, I thought I would see it immediately. I did see it deviceless. When I click on it, I can see there is my um, DC to DC charger, right? And what you can do is also firmware updates tricking through here, which means we could have updated also to version 3.41 Venus S through this portal if we are super remote and if internet connection. And uh, of course, also updating a lot of firmware here as well for all the Victor components. I'll show you in a second when it loaded. And there it is. And what I'm doing, because the stand or is a little older, I'll update the device right now. And then I uh, will start the engine just to see what's happening and if we see something, if it's working accordingly, because um, it should not be a connection lost anymore, as we learned in the release notes. All right, um, you can see, and uh, sorry, my camera just doesn't wanna work for the next couple of minutes, it looks like, because it's a cannon and overheating. Anyways, successful, so that's great. It's installed, so that is exactly what I wanted to see. You can still hear me, so I think um, that's pretty much similar, right? Uh, what I meant here, this is the Raspberry Pi or other, that's our Venus OS, and it's running on 341, and everything else is up to date. Clicking on dashboard now. Nothing changed. We can see we still have the PV charge over here, which is amazing to see. Then we also have nothing else. Let's see, I'll uh, start the engine really quick just to make sure uh, everything is working. And please pay attention to the current here because I thought I would see the uh, icon or something coming here, but no, that's not the case. So let's see if it does work. And now it's ramping up. You can see the voltage is increasing already and also the current is increasing. Additionally to a PV charging here, so we are charging already. And one other position to check is... Should be over here. Let's see what happened. Going back. Interesting. Interesting, so it lost it again. <laughs> I thought it's fixing this problem. And this is this is confusing. Alright, it's still I'm still charging here. Let it run for a little bit. Uh but yeah, I don't see it here. I'll let me do a reboot. Alright, so we're back finally. Okay, here we can see it. There it is on the bottom. That's how it should be. Let me go over here, do a refresh. Let's see what we see. We see it's still charging. Good. That's how it should be. It's charging. I, I would love to see um, an extra widget here. I might have to edit, I guess, uh, which I might have not done in a, in a long time. All right. I'll stop the car. And yeah, there we are. We're back just to PV power here. Good. All right. So that's, that's already good to see. It does work as it should. Now going back to settings really quick, just to double check if setup helper is installed, but it looked pretty good already. So everything we saw, active packages um, was there, I believe. We don't have a G GPI board, so nothing there to encounter. And then we have this overview and yeah, temperature still warm. All right, let's uh, say this one was successful versus my Raspberry Pi 4 was not successful. I was looking into that a little bit more and um, was uh, trying to troubleshoot it and I found 
Um, there is this data log and then there's messages. Uh, I looked into that. And I might have found this, that there is a problem with the clock. I think the exact wording of the entry was failed to set hardware clock, which I thought shouldn't be a problem, but let's see. Um, I'll try one or two more things connecting through PuTTY. You might remember PuTTY when I say date. Then you can see we do have a UTC time, but change the time to a Pacific time in Venus S, not on the Raspberry Pi itself. So what I will do, I'll give it a try here with the local time and change that to a new time zone, which means I'll be using this command and then I'll be using, in my case, it's this command because I'm in Los Angeles. Date. Now I did change it to Pacific time and I will do one more reboot and then afterwards I'll try it again and maybe we are more successful this time. Alright, let's see, yep, reconnected and here we have everything, multi -class getting information, hopefully, there we go, let's go to menu, oh sorry, let's go to settings, date and time again, and <laughs> interesting, I thought it would keep it, but it's still the UTC time, uh, let me connect via PuTTY again. Well, the local time, at least, it did save. Okay. Um, well, I'll try it one more time. Let's go back to firmware. There we go. Online updates. Press to check. And I will install it one more time and see if uh, the fourth time is a charm. As uh, we say, right? Let's, let's, yeah, let's go and uh, let's fast forward to that point. Okay, so it just rebooted again. And it was at 80 something percent, so reconnect. I'll check the settings here again. My hopes are not very high. Firmware, and we are still at 3.40. So I'll call it a day in this case. I'll most likely unplug my MultiPlus and everything else first and see if there's any firmware updates needed as well. And then I'll try again updating because I don't want to make this video li any longer. First off, my voice is pretty at the end, but also um, we have a 50% win. <laughs> so, especially with the Raspberry Pi where the XS, the Orion XS is connected, so that worked out well. Anyway, if you have any recommendation what I should do and what I'm doing wrong, I try to incorporate the date information if that might have an impact. Uh, I'll try to do more digging, more research in the locks and uh, we'll spend more time offline and hopefully find what it is and let you know what it is if I find it. Um, I'm open for all recommendations at the moment and see what it is because I have apparently it can't continue. It's just not possible. All right, let me summarize everything. It worked 50% on the Raspberry Pi 3. All good. Um, if you have any questions, please put it in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and like and subscribe to the channel on the video if you want to. If you like that stuff, if I'm missing out on anything testing wise especially, let me know. And uh, there will be certainly some kind of follow-up. I did be a short or a follow-up video on this one. Thanks for watching. Cheers!